we got stuck on an issue about renewal or not of the term of office of a of a commissioner then the the subcommittee agreed that uh, we need to seek a legal opinion of the on this matter and the meeting adjourned at that point having agreed that we need to seek legal opinion on whether we can renew the term of office of Commissioner Lutuli, specifically. Let me therefore welcome you all back to this meeting today and uh, declare this meeting officially open. Let me hear if there are any apologies for today's meeting, Mastol. Uh, good morning, Chair, and good morning to colleagues and honorable members. No, Chair, we don't have any apologies. Uh, Mr. CPC will join us uh, slightly late. He's trying to connect. Uh, also, uh, Honorable Kondwe uh, has came in. Uh, Dr. Heiber has apologized uh, for this meeting, Chair. That's all for now, Chair President. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Pole. Honorable members, we I've been in discussion with the with the Secretariat. And uh, I have agreed with them that uh, we need to dispense with the set of two two sets of minutes of this subcommittee so that we must not leave this uh minutes for too long and therefore today before we go to the business of the day we shall have to deal with those two sets of minutes and uh, and and get through with them and thereafter go to the business of the day which is uh getting a, a response from Parliament legal, of, uh, uh, legal Services in terms of the request that we have made to them. As I have said, I now officially declare the meeting open. Maskola, let me check again. Do we have any apologies? Uh, we don't have any apologies, Chair. We don't have any apologies. Okay. Can you see the minutes, Chair? Yes, I can see them. Excellent, Chair. Thank you. Um, uh, the, date, that... the date is the 25th January. Yes, Chair, the date is the 25th January. Uh, yes. That day we just uh, uh, did a shortlisting of candidates. So okay. I'm on page one, Chair. Uh, all members are present on the day. I'm on page two. Um, where we shortlisted 16 candidates, Chair. Okay. Members will shout if there's one thing they want to correct on the minutes. They just shout. I'm on page three, Chairperson. Uh, that is basically like each person. The meeting didn't take long. We finished at 11. Thank you. Any any correction that uh, members want to make on the minutes? If not, we are now presenting this set of minutes for adoption by the meeting. Can I get an indication of uh, proposal for adoption from any member of the committee? Uh, sorry, sorry, uh, Honorable Chair. On the minutes, I think if we can go to the last page of the minutes. Okay. okay. Yes, 2.5. Yes, 2.5. Yes, uh, I, I'm, I'm not sure, Honorable Chair, 
on the objection or it's captured here that the Democratic Alliance raised an objection. I'm not sure whether are we capturing it as a, the, the, the DA or are we saying it was raised by Honorable Schreiber? I just need clarity on that one. Thanks, John. We, we, <laughs> we, we represent political parties in this committee. So I don't see anything wrong because Dr. Schreiber was in this meeting representing the Democratic Alliance. Okay. Unless I can get another view from the, but I, I don't see anything wrong there. Okay. Because any member in the committee, the expression he or she makes represent the party he or she is coming from. Okay. Yes. No, no, Honorable Chair, the reason why I'm raising what I'm raising now is because uh, when Honorable Schreiber raised this, he, he never said, is raising it, the DA is raising an objection. He said, I must be noted that I'm objecting. Ne? That's why I'm asking. Uh, uh, but I agree with you, Honorable Chair, that we are representing our parties uh, on this committee. So uh, noting it uh, like that is maybe acceptable, but it's because of how he raised it. I, he did not say the DA. Thanks, Chair. Our political expressions are not the same, uh, Honorable <laughs> Kibi, given our political orientation and background is also not the same. In the AMC, we speak in plural all the time. You don't express a view as yourself. Thank you very much. Uh, can I get an indication if this set then will be adopted Chair. after this explanation? Chair. Is that Dr. Gondre? Yes. Thank you, Dr. Gondre. Take the floor. Honorable James. Honorable James, um, I'm a bit concerned. I don't recall uh, any other set of minutes a pointing to a political party raising an objection. It would be worded as an objection was raised, you know, because remember, this is a, a committee of parliament. It may be a multi-party committee, but I take it that way we stand together and we, we deliberate or, you know, we have any kind of engagement. We, we stand as a collective. And so when, when one person raises it, um, you know, it's 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 not necessarily an indication of um, you know an affiliation to a particular party because remember our role is to hold uh, um, you know the executive accountable and how are we going to do that if we don't object uh, you know as individuals so I that that is my my take on it it would have been better probably if it had been uh, phrased as an objection was raised I don't recall any set of minutes that we've ever. Um, adopted indicating that the ANC or the DA or the IFP raised uh, an objection to this effect, etc. Thank you so much. Thank you, Honorable Kondwe. Remember, Honorable Kondwe, uh, in a number of minute, uh, meetings in the committee, even in the House, political parties indicate their objection. And it is not written in the minutes there that that member objected, but that political party from which the member is coming is, is objecting. And it is always noted like that. This is not causing division. It's because we are a multi-party committee. It represents our composition. Can I get a second to a proposal to adopt this set after the explanation 
make. Honorable Chair. Yes, Honorable Gibby. I, I uh, move for the adoption of this set of minutes. Thanks, Chair. Honorable Kibi, can I get a second to Honorable Kibi? Honorable CBC? I second. Thank you, Honorable CBC. That set of minutes is now adopted. Can we go to the second set, uh, Moscol? That meeting is the meeting of the of the twenty sixth. Yes, Chairperson. Uh, I'm on page one. Uh, Members will shout if they want to make some correction on the pages as 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 Maskole is taking us through the pages. Uh, the twenty sixth, Chairperson. We're dealing with the renewability and non-renewable process of commissioner. I'm on page one, Chair, and all members are also present uh, in this uh, particular meeting. I'm on page two. Uh, page two, Chairperson. It's a very short meeting as well, Chair. It uh, ended at uh, half past 11. Thank you, Chair. Are there any corrections, members? If there are not, can I get a member who want to propose the adoption of this set of minutes? Honorable Chair? Yes, Honorable Mkweba. Um, uh, good morning, uh, Chair and uh, Honorable Members and the support staff. I'm moving for the adoption of these mi minutes uh, of the 26th as a true reflection of that meeting, Chair. Thank you very much. Thank you, Honorable Mkweba. Any, any second to Honorable Mkweba? Any second to the adoption of the minutes? Honorable Kibi, I'm giving you the floor. Uh, thank you, Honorable Chair. I, sub I support the move by Honorable Mkweba that we should accept the minutes as a true reflection of our last meeting. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Honorable Kibi. Members, we, we, we come now to the gist of today's meeting. Now I will hand over to the legal team to take us through the matter that we requested uh, legal opinion on. Is Noltando in the meeting? Uh, good morning, Chair, and good morning, members. Yes, Chair, I am here. Okay, I don't know whether it's you or any uh, delegated person who will do this, but I'm, I'm handing over to you. The floor is yours. Um, thank you, Chairperson. I will do. I will take the committee through the the opinion, and I would kind of like read the opinion just to um, so that we get it on the record. <clears throat> we were requested as the office to provide um, an opinion on whether or not the portfolio committee can or has the power to renew the contract of a public service commissioner in terms of the Public Service Commission Act. Also, we were requested to provide a view on whether the criteria or yardstick to determine efficient performance or non-performance is that which is spelled out in the Constitution of the Republic of South Africa in sections 196. Four and 197 too. Uh, further, we were requested um, to give a view on what process should be followed by the National Assembly in renewing a contract um, at the term of office of a commissioner in the Public Service Commission. 
Um, the request um, came about as a result of the committee, as you've already um, said, Chairperson, that um, the committee of the, the subcommittee of the portfolio committee on six January had contracts in terms of the law and what is the criteria or process to be followed by the committee to renew a contract of a commissioner. Section 196 of the Constitution established the Public Service Commission and, amongst others, um, regulates the appointment of its commissioners. The requirements um, contained in Section 196 of the Constitution are that there should be 14 um, Public Service Commissioners that are appointed by the President, of which five must be um, recommended by the National Assembly and approved by the National Assembly. The remaining um, commissioners must be from provincial um, legislatures. In terms of Section 196.10, a commissioner is appointed for a term of five years, which is renewable for one additional term only. Section 196.9 requires the Parliament to enact legislation regulating the procedure for the appointment of commissioners and the renewal thereof. In that regard, um, as required by the Constitution, the Act was um, promulgated the Public Service Commission Act, and Section 4 of that Act deals with appointment of commissioners. I will not read the whole section. I will just go straight to section, um, to subsection 5, which speaks about the renewal. The President may, as contemplated in Section 196.10 of the Constitution, and within 90 days before the expiry of the first term of office, of a commissioner renew the term of that commissioner for one additional term only. The case of a commissioner who had been approved by the National Assembly on the recommendation of the National Assembly, and in the case of a commissioner was nominated by a premier of a province on the recommendation of a provincial legislature. Subsection 4 does not apply to the renewal term of office. Subsection 4 is the one that deals with the whole recruitment process where there must be advertisement and all that. But if you are going to renew a contract of a commissioner, that section doesn't um, apply. So the committee wouldn't have to follow that process with the um, where they to renew the contract in question. <clears throat> Excuse me. But then a year of a term of a commissioner must be based on the commissioner remaining a fit and a proper person as required by section 196.10 of the constitution and having maintained a satisfactory level of performance in relation to his or her duties. Coming to the question of whether the committee can renew the contract of Dr. Little, which expired on 16 January 2022, and if they would, what would be the criteria for such renewal? As um, I've already read into the record that Section 4, 5, 6, and 7 of the Act that deals with the criteria for the renewal of the contract of a commissioner contains provisions that were instated by the Public Service Commission Amendment Act of 2019 which is in operation. It is assented to by the president and it was promulgated. So we can use those new sections in this process. Because previously there was no process in the act for, for a renewal, but now the is um, the kind of um, guideline in, in, in the act that guides the committee and parliament on how to, to, to renew a contract of a commissioner. In terms of those uh, provisions, the president is empowered to renew the contract of a commissioner for one additional term only 90 days before the expiry of the first term of office of a commissioner on the recommendation of the National Assembly, if that commissioner has been approved by the National Assembly. The committee does not have the power to renew a contract of a commissioner. The power to renew a contract of a commissioner vests with the president. However, that process um, where the president would um, have to sign on the dotted line to renew the, the contract of a commissioner cannot, um, <clears throat> cannot commence without the approval and the processes of the National Assembly. Nevertheless, the criteria set out in Section 4 of the Act does not assist and cannot apply to the contract of Dr. Lutuli as that contract has come to an end on 26 January 2022. So there is now no contract to renew because the contract expired already. So um, what is envisaged in the act is that um, the contract um, must be renewed at least in 90 days before. So that means um, that is the president who must do that. That means the process could, should have commenced long before the 90 days for the renewal because um, you cannot renew what has already expired. That is um, 
in terms of the of the law of contract. With the contract already having ended, the committee must follow now the recruitment process in accordance with section four of the act. However, this would this would have the result that this would be a new appointment and not a renewal for Dr. Lutuli's contract. Um, the second question that the committee requested a legal view on is what is the criteria or the yardstick to determine efficient performance or non-performance of a commissioner? Even though this question has become moot because of um, the fact that Dr. Lutuli's contract has already expired, but for the sake of completion and also to provide clarity um, for future renewal processes, we will provide a legal view on it. Section four and six, um, section four, six, and seven of the Public Service Commission Act provides that in order for the contract of a commissioner to be renewed, the said commissioner should still be a fit and a proper person as required by section 196, 10 of the constitution and must have maintained a satisfactory, le a satisfactory level of performance in relation to his or, or her duties. This is the only criteria set by the act to measure the performance of the commissioner so that means the committee would have to go back to the requirement of efficient proper person. So if during the tenure of the commissioner's office, the commissioner has not done anything to render him unfit and improper to serve as a commissioner, that um, commissioner can be considered for a renewal of, a, of his or her contract. And also the commissioner must have maintained a satisfactory level of performance in relation to his or her duties in the commission. Um, this is... Um, the, the commission is then, um, the, the other question that came up is like, how then can the committee um, do like a performance um, appraisal on the commissioner as an individual member of the commission? Um, that is a very operational issue that um, the committee would need maybe to discuss with the department that could be put in the regulations because it's very operational in nature. You cannot put it in legislation or it could be um, in the policy of the, of the commission on how this, performance um, management can be done by the committee and by the, by the, by, sorry, yeah, just by the committee. So, uh, because the commission is accountable to the National Assembly and must report annually to the Assembly on all its work and activities, and thus um, it's possible for the committee to continuously monitor the work of the commission. And as I was saying, um, the committee can set in the regulations or in the in the policy of the commission on how this whole process would um, be completed. In conclusion, uh, the committee does not have the power to renew the contract of commissioners as that power case with the president. The committee may simply recommend for approval by the National Assembly to the president that the expiring term of a commissioner be renewed, but that must be done at least 90 days before such expiry. In the case of the renewal, the renewal process is not possible as the contract has expired already. If the committee decides to appoint to Tanutuli, that would constitute a new um, appointment and not a renewal. Thank you, Chairperson. That's all from me. Thank you, thank you, Noltando. Can I can I get uh, the views of members, or can I take the first bite? Thank you very much, Noltando. Now, this matter is very clear. It is very clear in the sense that if ever we have to renew a contract of a commissioner, that has to be done 90 days before the expiry of such a contract. In this case of Dr. Lituli, his contract has already expired. Therefore, there is no contract to renew. Uh, I want to say to my colleagues in the committee, how if then we, 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 we shortlist or we add Dr. Lutuli in the list of the shortlisted candidates for interview because there is no contract to renew. I, I, 
I will hear from you, honorable members. I therefore open the floor to yourselves. Honorable Chair. Yes, Honorable Kibi. Uh, Honorable Chair, I think um, uh, we have heard the explanation by the legal uh, the department around this renewal. So because the contract has already expired, as explained, I support what you are saying, that uh, how about us including Dr. Lutuli onto the list of that we have, the list, uh, the short list, listed list uh, that has already been out, uh, if that is, if we are allowed to do so. Uh, we cannot renew it, but we can still include him on the, on the list. And he is going to go through the interviews like any other applicant on this. Uh, post. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, uh, Honorable Kibi. Any other view? Yes, Chair. The hand, our hands are up. Okay, Honorable uh, Mugueva. No, thank you very much, uh, uh, Honorable Chair one must agree with yourselves in your statement, especially that we have uh, this uh, uh, presentation from Ms. Nontandum Pikashi. I think the presentation is very clear, uh, is very clear in terms of this process, Chair. And uh, what I wish to agree with the uh, Honorable Kibi and uh, yourself that um, let's, uh, as this subcommittee, take uh, the issue of Dr. Lutuli to a normal process like all the other applicants and of which as, the com as this subcommittee, we have already uh, embarked in a process last week and uh, already there are names that has been recommended for public comments and um, interviews, which is the 16 names. Now that uh, chair, uh, last week we have uh, a privilege to go through the, the, the submission of Dr. Lutul and uh, discuss the issue uh, of uh, Mr. Lutul. I think it is important for fairness and uh, transparency and um, the, the professional profession, profession of our work uh, uh, take Dr. Lutuli uh, to the to the 16 names, which is then we must then uh, agree to this uh, subcommittee that uh, we then gonna amend our list to 17 uh, with the name of uh, Dr. Lutuli. Because I know that uh, as part of our discussion last week, uh, Honorable Shreba spoke about uh, Dr. Lutuli being part of the of those that have applied. And um, I know he was number 101, if I'm not mistaken, in the list of the applicants. So uh, we must take uh, Dr. Lutuli to a normal process like all other applicants and include him as number 17 in the 16 names that have been published by the, the, the parliament um, last, last week. However, it must be noted that definitely the, the renewal of this contract, uh, it's not uh, uh, in our powers as this subcommittee, but uh, the only Atlantic level of government, that uh, the level that will then deal with that, it's parliament and, and obvious the president. So uh, I will agree with yourselves and uh, honorable chief that uh, let uh, include the name of Dr. Lutul in the 16 names and it will make then the 17 names and then um, republished those names again with the name of Dr. Lutul included chair. Thank you very much. Uh, can I hear Dr. Gondwe and then Honorable Komani? Uh, 
I I tend to agree with the um, the prevalent view that we need to include um, the name of Dr. Lutulu in the in the shortlisted um, candidate list, um, and effectively making the list now seventeen from sixty. But I would like to to request that we seriously look into the issue of setting out that criteria or you know, ensuring that that criteria is in place so that we avoid a situation such as this one, um, you know, in future. So um, as, you know, the legal advisor has indicated, um, this criteria could be included in the regulations or in the policy of the commission. And I think it's up to us to ensure that that criteria is in place so that um, going forward, we avoid a situation where we have to um, you know, have such a deliberation and effectively um, delay the process of, of a commissioner being appointed. But um, I'm, I'm happy um, for Dr. Lituli to be um, shortlisted and included in the list of, of, of shortlisted candidates. Thank you, Chair. Honorable Komani. Uh, thank you very much, Chair, and good morning, colleagues. And let us also welcome the legal advice. Uh, Chair, I, I echo the same sentiments to my colleagues to say, let us include the name of uh, the doctor in the list of the people whom we are going to interview. However, Chair, it needs to be recorded and noted that it is, it is, I don't know how to put it, but it is very disappointing at this age and era that we are confronted with a situation like this one. Because should we have not uh, got a challenge of, um, of, 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 the, of the, 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 the yardstick as to how to measure the performance of Dr. Lutuli? We should have gone, uh, 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 made wasteful expenditures going through this process, only to find that it was, and uh, it was irrelevant. So, Chair, uh, one would as well uh, want to uh, uh, ask humbly that please, can we going forward uh, be on uh, on our toes in terms of what is happening, how that should happen, and when and with who's the responsible person. So that we need, to, uh, people need to account in terms of, 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 of this is a delay uh, really that has been caused for this committee. And it was, I mean, for the subcommittee and it was not caused by the subcommittee, but there is someone who have caused it. So Chair, uh, without any waste of time, I agree with the, 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 the other speakers uh, as to uh, the, us sub uh, submitting the name of doctor into the people who's, who are going to be uh, shortlisted for the interview. Thank you very much. Honorable CBC. Thank you, Chairperson, uh, for recognizing me and uh, good morning to all our honorable members and the support staff. You see, Chairperson, uh, yes, we accept the legal opinion which has been changed. What is my main concern, Chair, is who was supposed to do this initially? Why did we go to the process where this was supposed to be done 90 days prior? And then that person who was responsible for that, I think he needs to shake up. Another concern is now since we, Dr. Lutuli did apply and unfortunately he was not shortlisted, what criteria now are we going to use to put him back as number 17? Because uh, I, I don't think we need to agree for the sake of agreeing that he must be back because he's had the same opportunity as the same candidates who did apply. Unfortunately, according to what we did, 
we all agreed that he doesn't qualify. What will make him to qualify now? Are we going to feel pity? Because it's not like he didn't apply. We all have, and it has been even raised to this committee that his applicant was applicant number 101. If he was fit and proper, why was he his applicant being overlooked? And what another thing that we need to consider, sometimes we don't need to apply the unfair labor practice because what we are doing now to the 16 candidates, we are being unfair because he's been given the advantage that he has been there before. Therefore, he must be, con he must be considered because by us not shortlisting him, the message we were sending was clear, was that he is not fit and proper. All of a sudden, we are being said, we are saying now, he is fit and proper. Is that a fair labor practice? I don't think so, that is a fair labor practice. As much as I understand that it, is, it was not our fault, but he undergo the same processes as the other candidates, unfortunately, he didn't meet the criteria. Thank you, Chair. Uh, Honorable Subisi, it was not uh, the fault of uh, Dr. Lutuli that he was not among those two are shortlisted. Because remember, we were dealing with the renewal of his uh, term of office. And then the committee got stuck on the issue that uh, we don't have mechanisms in front of us of renewing a contract and how are we going to do that? Hence the committee sought a legal opinion on that. Now that we have that legal opinion, I don't think it would be fair to Dr. Lutuli to penalize him for the fault of others. I don't want to say here who was at fault. We take a collective play for the sake of Dr. Lutuli. Therefore, this is the most fairest way of dealing with this matter, to have him as part of those who have applied and shortlisted to be interviewed. That's the best way. Going forward, we shall have to go back to this matter and ensure that we have everything that the law says we must, we must have if we have to renew a term of office of a commissioner. Let me note Honorable Malobane and Kibi thereafter. Thank you, Honorable Chair. Greetings to Honorable Members and our support staff. Comrade Chair, the, what I want to, to add is that I think I also on the view to support that we add Dr. Lutulu to the shortlisted candidates because even last week when we deliberated, it was that issue that we agree to put him or to add him to be part of those who have been shortlisted. There's not much that I would say because everyone, there's a view that says we support the view that we add who Dr. Lutulu to be part of those who are going to be interviewed. But also to check on the legality of it, are there are going to be any challenges or what if we do add? Because even last, but when we spoke about the issue to add, I think there was no challenge. But if maybe there can be, we can be advised as we're meeting here today. Thank you, Chair. Uh, I'm not a, a legal person, but my as understanding tells me that I don't think there will be legal challenges because we have not concluded this process of shortlisting. We are shortlisting and we have not even conducted interviews. So if we add any 
candidate at this juncture. I don't need, I think that will be illegal. Can I, can I hear Honorable Gibi? Thank you, Honorable Chair. Uh, I, I agree with you, Honorable Chair. I don't think there's anything that might be a problem on if we are now deciding that we add to Dr. Ntuli. But on the issue of us not having shortlisted to Dr. Litu, Honorable members, we all saw the name of who Dr. Lee. But what was uh, what came to my mind is that uh, Dr. Lutulu applied, but we are about to renew his contract. So what is the use of us uh, shortlisting with Dr. Lutulu? Why is we are going through a process, a, a different process of renewing his contract? It's not because he we did not see him being fit and proper. But it's because of the process that we were supposed to, to follow of renewing his contract. And therefore, we shortlisted uh, the other, the 15, for the two positions. That is the only reason. So I think, uh, Honorable Chair, I've, I felt that I need to, to make that uh, clarity for the members. Thanks, Chair. Thank you, Honorable Kibi. Honorable members, is there any member that want to, to speak? If not, we are about to, to close the meeting. So there is no other member who want to express a view. Let me thank you all of you, uh, honorable members, and okay. thank Nontando. Hi, Chair. Uh, hello, uh, my colleague. Yes, you know, I just wanted to, 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 to just throw an announcement, Chair, before you close. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. You say yes. you want to make an announcement. Let me yes, allow that before yes, I... Yes, Chair. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Just to say that the interviews are, of course, on the 17th and 18th, Chairperson, and that uh, members of the subcommittee uh, are expected to be in Cape Town for those two days because the interviews will be done at, 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 at in Parliament present, Chairperson. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Maskole. So, members, we must get ready to go back to Cape Town. In fact, I'm going back on Monday on my side, uh, Mastrol, for, for, for the state of the nation. We will all be there on those two dates. Thank you, Chair. Yeah. Honorable members, thank you very much for availing yourselves for this meeting today. And thank you very much again for the professional manner in which we have handled this issue. It was not easy, but you have risen above any other issue to deal with this matter professionally. Thank you very much for that. And I therefore declare this meeting closed. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Chair. And thanks to everyone. Recording stopped.